What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Teed Up here on Varsity Sports Network, where athletes get to come on to the show and share their stories with the broad audience that we have here in the state of Florida. And today, you know we got a good one for you. James Hines, office of lineman for the varsity football team down there at Melbourne High, home of the dogs, baby. And he is going to come on, and you guys are actually going to get to hear about some of his experiences playing in Melbourne, playing football in Florida, and growing up playing the game. He's had a lot of transition throughout the entirety of his life. And for him to be where he is right now, competing at the level that he is competing at right now, it's amazing. It's a great story. Can't wait for you guys to check him out here in a few moments. My colleague Dan LaForest actually told me about this kid down there in Melbourne and said that he loves VSN. And anybody that loves VSN, we love you. We're glad that you're tuning in to what we have, all the high school sports content that you could ever want here in the state of Florida, and we're not stopping bringing you all the great content that we can give. Now, let's not waste any more time. Let's bring on my boy, James Hines. Let's tee him up. All right, everyone, all the way from Melbourne High School, the dogs. We got James Hines, offensive lineman for the varsity football team. He's on here. He's joining us. I hear that he loves VSN. Is this true? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Like I told you, man, my colleague Dan LaForest told me about you and everything. And I was like, I got to get him on there. I got to get him on. And he was telling me about your play, too, and how you play for Melbourne. And I saw your huddle. Uh, you're filming every day. And I was like, oh, yeah, this guy's a mauler. Let me get him on it. And then not only that, but she got the size. You're 260, 6'3", 6'4"? 6'3". and still growing. Yeah. <laughs> so you've already got that Division One offensive lineman build and everything. You're going to be great. You're going to do great things. And you're only a junior. Everybody, he's only a junior. So he has another year of football after this to compete and to get better. But first of all, James, how you doing today, man? I'm doing great. Man, like I said, appreciate you hopping on here with me. So, man, let's talk some Melbourne football, man. Tell me a little bit about the team. Well, actually, let's start off. Tell me where you're from. Are you originally from Melbourne? So I was born in Fairbanks, Alaska. Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> my uh, mom and dad met in Fairbanks, Alaska, and I lived there till I was like two or three. And then I moved to Texas and I lived there for three years. And then my parents separated and my mom came, lived in Orlando. And I yeah. lived in Orlando for six years. And then from Orlando in like first grade, I moved up to Michigan and lived there for like six years. And uh, that's where I started playing football was up in Michigan. And we played eight-man football in small little areas up there. And uh, that was what got me really into it. And then I we got tired of the snow. We started missing the <laughs> beaches. So we decided to come back down to Florida. And coming to Florida, I remember my freshman year, I came in my freshman year to florida and i remember stepping in the first day it was like august 27th and i stepped in the weight room and it was conditioning it was covid still so like we were weren't starting the season for a long time but everyone was still conditioning and in the weight room and stuff I remember stepping in there and it didn't help that they had like seniors who had already graduated working out with us too yeah. so i thought these guys were high school players and they weren't <laughs> but I, I stepped in the weight room and i was like wow there's some dudes here <laughs> yeah. I, I better start get working <laughs> Oh my God. So let's go back. Alaska, dude. Fairbanks, Alaska. I know yeah. I know a little bit about Fairbanks, Alaska. And Alaska in general, man, it is it's a place to live. It's very cold up there. The days yeah. aren't too long. It gets dark early. 
uh, uh, sometimes during the year at least. And so I know a lot about Alaska, but man, you coming from Alaska, you're actually from Alaska. It's not every day that you meet someone that says, hey, yeah, I'm from Alaska. I was born in Alaska. It's not every day. It doesn't happen often. Like, do you remember anything about Alaska? I know you say you were two or three years old when you left. I don't, I don't remember anything from living there. I, my mom was able to take me to a family vacation back to Alaska and we went fishing and stuff in the middle of summer. It was like 60 degrees outside and we were all wearing winter jackets and stuff in the middle of wow. summer. But, uh, wow. So you yeah, said you was, went fishing. So yeah, like, we, was it like the deep sea fishing where you go out in the middle of the ocean, you can't see any land around you or anything? No, <laughs> we were only there for like a few days in Valdez, Alaska and yeah. we went fishing and it was in the middle of the salmon spawning season and they're going crazy i mean it looked like rivers of fish just swimming on top of the water wow that is amazing to hear and then you took yourself to texas and then michigan yeah. like you've been all over the place you've seen a lot of the world or at least a lot of the united states and i've i've heard about that eight-man football that they do a lot up in the yeah. north and it's it's crazy uh yeah my Hopefully I can get some of the guys to watch this, but my old teammates up there have won three state championships or something like that in the last wow. three years. Wow. Um, I heard a few weeks ago their first game was the 76 to zero blowout. Oh my gosh. <laughs> in eight man football. That's ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Man, yeah, I've definitely heard about it up there, especially like you said in those smaller areas. I've heard about it in Iowa. And, and like all the other states up there, like in those small rural towns, especially like they have eight man football just because, you know, it's generally just not a lot of people that live there. So yeah, they have a hard time getting smaller. big teams. Mm -hmm. And that's completely understandable, but that's OK. Hey, football is football. But hey, now you're in Florida playing football. You're playing with the big dogs in Florida. Yeah. We, we all know Florida is one of the most competitive states that produces high school football talent and football talent in general. A lot of people like to talk about Texas and how football is a religion in Texas and how so many players come out of like states like Mississippi. But I feel like Florida is definitely one of those states, at least top four, in my opinion, out of all the states that produce high level football talent. Florida produces yeah. a lot of it. A it whole does. lot of it. And, of course, you clearly had to make the adjustment coming down to uh, to Melbourne and, and everything. Yeah. But it seems like you fared pretty well, man. Looking at your videos and your film, you're bullying guys. You're a mauler. Guys are probably scared of you when they put their hand down there in the dirt. They probably don't want <laughs> They don't want any <laughs> business down there in front of you for sure. And you've got the size and everything. But also – not only are you just playing on the offensive line, but if I'm not mistaken, you play several positions on the line too. Yes, sir. Uh, my freshman year, I came in and I played right tackle on JV. I was, I was not like, I didn't even understand what Florida football was. I stepped on the field and I, I it was crazy. Cause I felt like I was like going into the league almost. Cause it was like, <laughs> we got turf field, big stadium, weight room, two weight rooms, like a bunch of guys. We got like, the guys getting looked at by colleges. My freshman year, we had a uh, guy who was the most chillest dude I ever met. Awesome guy, uh, four star Chase Smith, who's now at Miami, mm -hmm. playing striker there. And he was just, he was a great leader on our team and great personality on our team freshman year. And I, I seeing him and seeing guys like that go through inspired me and really like opened my eyes to what football could do for me and how I could use it to chase after a degree and earn myself a degree and play a sport that I love playing. Man, that is amazing. Great take on that, by the way. So you talked about guys that you met when you came in as a freshman. And now that you're a junior, not quite a senior yet, but of course, I'm pretty sure that the younger teammates on your team and even maybe some of the older ones, I'm sure that they view a player of your stature, especially starting on that offensive line. They view you as a leader. And in order to have a good football team, you, you've got to have good leadership. And that leadership doesn't always just come from one person. It comes from several guys on the team that can get the rest of the guys around them to buy into what the team is doing and what the team is wanting to do. And that is usually winning and winning football games and and going to the playoffs and everything. And 
with that being said, let's talk about the team itself. Uh, we kind of touched on this a little bit in the beginning, but let's go ahead and talk about the team. So with you being a junior, you got some playing time last year. And everything. Tell me about your season last year. How did that go for you guys? Can so, you tell the audience? Last year was a historic year for Melbourne. My freshman year on varsity, we went three and six, and we had a lot – we had a lot of stuff going on. The COVID stuff really hurt people. It was just, it was a really tough year. Yeah. And, uh, but I learned a lot from those coaches that were there my freshman year. And I, I learned a lot of stuff that I'm still taking every day. But uh, now last year we got all new coaching staff, everything changed. And uh, our group of returners came back really hungry. And we, our seniors really wanted to win and have a better year. They, I remember the playoff because my freshman year, every team got a playoff game because mm-hmm. of COVID and we played Wakaiva. And I remember the sobbing tears and everyone's super emotions when we lost that game and how the seniors were like devastated. And I remember how the, at the time juniors, but last year seniors were like, we're coming back and we're going to do something more than this. And uh, last year we started the season off and we had a few bumps in the road. We lost to, both Merritt Island and Satellite, our first two weeks of playing, but it, it was close games. And uh, we just had a lot of mental mistakes and penalties that weren't good, stuff like that. But uh, we had really great leaders that were leading our team, and we ended up going 11-3, and three, including our spring game. Mm-hmm. So uh, we had 10 straight wins in a row, set a bunch of records, had a great – at great atmosphere at the games our fans were amazing our homecoming game last year oh my that was an experience i loved it so much we had the biggest homecoming crowd ever that we've had in the last like five years or something like that i don't know but it was it was just an amazing experience and seeing the fans come out like that and seeing the team come together and the leaders that we had we had our defense was great last year our defense is still great this year but uh our defense we had a lot of great leaders on our defense, including Gavin Rowell, who was the meanest D lineman I ever met. And he would just tear me up in practice. <laughs> and he made Friday so much easier for me because going against them all week, it was like, it wasn't anything when it come Friday night and uh, just be able to take it by play by play and have good games. I had to, last year I played left tackle and I was the starting left tackle and I played every down of offense last year for our team we I was kind of in a perfect world if our school had more players playing at it and stuff I would have still have played JV last year but since we are low on numbers and we've always been kind of low on numbers at Melbourne especially for O-line it's hard finding big people at Melbourne (laughs) so uh but we were low on numbers and coach trusted me to be to be the uh, left tackle and I just took that opportunity and tried to make the most I could with it. And I'm very blessed to be able to play and start my sophomore year. Not a lot of people can say that coming into their junior year. And what I was able to do my sophomore year really humbled me and made me excited and thankful for everything that's happened to me so far. Man, that is excellent. Love the way you broke that down. You're very well-spoken, very intelligent. I really appreciate that. But saying uh, how you, we're going up against much tougher players in practice and how that made you better and how that made the games easier uh, for that. And that's just what I love to hear because competition breeds excellence. And that's obviously how a lot of football players are able to get better. They have that competition. They're in the locker room with them. And even though there is, it's mostly camaraderie, but it's still competition, and what, when everybody is helping each other get better, that only fares well for the entire team. And a lot of times that shows results on the football field on Friday nights. So that's excellent that you were able to do that. Excellent what you've accomplished your sophomore year, going into your junior year now. And speaking of your junior year, you guys got a game tomorrow. Yes, sir. You guys are playing satellite and satellite you, at satellite. <laughs> you just mentioned satellite and how you had uh, some bumps in the road at this time last year when you guys faced them. So what are you expecting to do? What has 
Coach uh, uh, told you guys as far as what you guys need to do. Have you guys been preparing this week to not make the mistakes that you made last year versus Satellite and go into that stadium and hand them an L unlike last year? Uh, it's the, the same well, same thing along the lines of what he told us after and before the game last year, and that's how we execute and how we play the game. Um, last year, last year it was like, I want to say a six to 14 point game or something like that was the final score. And we were on the two yard line about to push in a touchdown in the last two minutes to win the game. And we couldn't do it. We threw outside and it got hit immediately and the game was over. And yeah. it was, it was just one of those losses that really, really hurt because you were so close yet mm -hmm. so far. And our, it wasn't just that play that lost us the game. We made a lot of mental ex mistakes and weren't executing um, our, we're blessed to have great coaches that are leading us and have a great game plan for us. And uh, if all we have to do is execute and come out playing with perfection. Um, I feel like we had a good week of practice this week. Um, we played hard and we played smart football. We are getting the reps faster in practice. Everything's starting to move faster. And I'm really excited because this year it feels like we're starting to click a lot quicker than we did mm -hmm. last year. Mm -hmm. I remember thinking last year we clicked a lot quicker than the year before. So if we can keep on getting better each year, we can get, keep on getting better and keep on getting farther, hopefully. Yes, but um, we're focusing on the game plan. All we have to do is execute, do what our coaches have us and have planned for us and uh, should be a great game tomorrow. Yes, sir. I, I know it's going to be a great game, especially after the way you just broke it down. Man, I'm, I'm super excited for you guys. And I hope you guys go in there and do your thing tomorrow. But um, so let's kind of transition now a little bit uh, before I, I let you go here. So with all the success that you've had and the growing that you had to go through over the past couple of years, who has been there for you? Who do you consider your biggest supporters in this football journey that you're going through right now? Um, my parents have definitely been there for me. They've helped me through everything. They're Now it's getting to the time where they're going to start having to take me to visits and stuff like that. <laughs> and they're coming to games. And uh, um, my mom and my dad have always made an effort to support me. And like when my dad wants to come watch a game, he can come stay with here, me here and with me and my mom and, we're able to all watch games together, which is really awesome. Not a lot of people can say that about separated parents. Yeah. But um, uh, also Coach Kentai, he's always he was there my freshman year as an assistant coach, and uh, he's always been there and he's helped me a lot and he's helped me with a lot of the mental part aspects of the game and not getting so anxious during games and helping me stay focused, stay driven, and um, be a good football player just so I can do the best that I can do for my team. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hey, your mind, your mental, that's the important, the most important thing that you can use, especially during a football game. The, the game is way more mental than it is physical, even though it looks very physical out there and it can get really physical. But so much goes on up here, so much that you got to know you. You've got to be aware of your protections, especially as a lineman. You've got to be aware of your protections. You've got to be able to help the quarterback out. You've got to be able to buy the to buy time for your quarterback. You've got to be able to uh, make your run fits, you know, make the blocks that you need to block. And it's really, really important for you to have your head in the right space during a game, as well as that week of practice every week on top of that. But man, that is amazing. I'm so happy for you guys at Melbourne. I'm really, really, really wishing that you guys have an excellent rest of the season this year. I can't wait to see uh, you guys go into the playoffs because I know you're going to make the playoffs. You guys are heading straight there like a torpedo. Keep doing what you're doing. Don't give up. You've got a whole nother year of football left, man. Good luck in your recruiting journey as well because there are going to be some eyes on you, man. You've got the size. You've got the talent. People are going to be looking at you. Coaches are going to be hitting you up and you're doing everything right. You got your phone number your, and your email and everything like that on your uh, Twitter page. And you've you've got everything set to where these coaches can reach out to you. One last thing I got to ask you about, speaking of Twitter, on your uh, profile, you uh, have uh, the All-American Bowl. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Did you get invited to that? So that was a really cool experience that I did last year. I got uh, my, one of my teammates got invited to it 
and I submitted my interest form to try to get invited to it. I wasn't sure if I was going to get anything because yeah. I had just finished my sophomore year and I'm like, ain't no way they're going to invite a sophomore out to one of these things. <laughs> But uh, they invited me out, and I was like, this is awesome. Playing at Camping World Stadium yeah. and right for the F- FCS kids, that'd be so sick to do. And uh, my uh, parents let me do it, and I uh, got to go down there, and we did like three days of practice and then yeah. played the game. And that was a really amazing experience. I got – we on my right tackle and right guard came with me too, or they came wow. to it too, and we all played, and we were on the same team, and – we ended up winning 28 to 27. Wow. With, uh, Coach Reimer and Coach Raul. Or, yeah, Raul. Um, and uh, it was a really cool experience. I stayed at the hotel there, and the FCS kids were staying at the same hotel. So we were, we, we'd go sit in the pool after practice, and these like FCS college players would be sitting there on their phones talking to NFL scouts and stuff. And yeah. It was just, it was crazy getting to be that close to the next level who are trying to go to the next level after that. So it was an awesome experience and I loved it. I got invited again this year and I'm going to try doing it again too. Yes, sir. First. Absolutely. And to everyone who is out there watching, especially you young high school players out there, take this as an example. Closed mouths don't get fed. James right here just said he didn't even think that he was going to get an invite and he reached out. He put his hand out there and he actually was able to get it just because you think something doesn't make someone else thinks the same way. And clearly other people are seeing your talent, man, and just keep working hard, keep grinding. Congratulations to that. Hope you were able to get that invite again. If you got invited last year and you're getting better, you're going to give, you're going to get invited again. And I'm so happy for you, man. Thank you so much for joining me here on Teed Up. Everyone, he is James Hines, offensive lineman for Melbourne Varsity Football, the dogs. James, you have a good rest of the evening and good luck tomorrow down there at Satellite. Everyone, yes, James Hines. Thank you, man. Thank you so much for having me on. I appreciate it. No problem. You have a good one. Yes, sir. Man, that was one of the best interviews that I've had the pleasure of hosting. He is extremely well-spoken. James, great job on the interview, man. You're very smart, very talented. I'm so appreciative of you being able to come on here and share your story with the audience. And I hope all your friends and families get to see this. Don't stop grinding. Don't stop working. You're going to be just fine down there at Melbourne. And the football team in general is going to be just fine. They're, they're going to have a very good season. They're one and one right now, but they're looking to go down there at Satellite tomorrow and get that W. And they're not going to hold anything back. But thank you so much for watching. Thank you for tuning in. And don't forget, if you know any athletes out there who deserve to be here on Teed Up, guess what? We'll tee them up, and you'll get to hear their stories, too. Thank you. Please reach out to me. Don't hesitate. And you guys have a good rest of the day. Can't wait for those Friday night lights.